रहमान रहीम जी अस्सलाम वालेकुम गुड डे टू यू इन द लास्ट वीक वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द चैप्टर नंबर 4 वी बेसिकली डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द मटेरियल डेरिवेटिव एंड बेस्ड ऑन दैट वी डिस्कस द रेनॉल्ड्स transport theorem hopefully you have gone through the relevant problems which i assigned you during the week and they should be clear to you if you have any question from the previous week any confusion any query let me discuss no, that otherwise we will move on to the next, next topic Okay, if it is clear, uh, quickly uh, let me know about the Reynolds transport theorem. What's the mathematical statement for the Reynolds transport theorem? Quickly. So the DB system over DT is equal to uh, DB control volume. Uh, the total derivative of the system property. Yes, sir. That's D by DT of the B system should be equal to the time rate of change of the property. of control volume within the control volume that is partial by partial t triple integral i am writing it as single integral but it's a triple integral so uh, rho p b b and d v d v plus d property coming into the control volume and going out of the control volume the net property flow is control surface integral into rho b v dot n sorry for the bad n n is a unit vector it's the normal vector normal area vector unit vector of the normal vector that is perpendicular to the area so is this statement clear yes sir So today we are going to start chapter number five, which is the finite control volume analysis, and that chapter is wholly solely based on the understanding of the Reynolds transport theorem. So we'll be discussing the finite control volume analysis, and this is wholly solely based on this Reynolds transport theorem. If I ask you, or if I draw a system here, let's say this blue rectangle is a system. what's the quality of this system how you will define that it is a system what will make it a system and not a control volume sir so move kare control volume can also move okay we discussed in the last chapter control volume can be a moving so what quality will make it a system what property will make it a system and uh, sir it is fixed it is fixed so control volume can also be a fixed uh, sir but at a time uh, that uh, uh, the control volume will move after some time no it will not but, move if it's a fixed control volume or a stationary body the control volume will not move what's the quality of a system we discussed in the last lecture so yeah actual or wo control volume imaginary no the revise nahi karte aap log the mass of the system is a constant right the lagrange approach aisa hi hai Yes, so if i represent the mass of the system as m system then with time what should happen to the mass of the system constant sir sir it remains same time the rate of change of the mass of the system would be equal to 
Zero. 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 That is d by dt of the system mass is equal to zero. What it is representing? It is representing the system and it's basically the now this term is representing what that capital B which property we're discussing now is the mass so capital B of the system is equal to the mass of the system so small b would be equal to unit b over mass which is basically one right unit is so if i write the expanded form of this term the reynolds transport theorem what would that form be it would be partial by partial t integral control volume rho now b is one so i will not be writing here dv plus integral control surface rho v dot and should be equal to zero right this is called the continuity equation clear yes sir so what continuity equation is telling is that with time rate, there should be nothing stored or released by the control volume. That is, there should be nothing happening inside the control volume. The control volume should not release any mass, nor it should store any mass, right? The first term, that yes, with sir. time, the control volume should not be acting as a sink and it should not be acting as a source. It should be a neutral entity. It should not add mass to the system or it should not absorb mass from the system. And the other term, that is the convective term, it's telling us that the net mass flow should be zero. That is the mass entering into the control volume should be equal to the mass going out. Then our control, then our system will be a system. Then we can define it as a system. Then the mass will remain fixed. Then the time rate of change of the mass should remain equal to zero. Right? Yes, sir. Now, if I say that my system is a steady state system. What will happen to the equation? So first term will become zero. The first term will be zero, so only we'll be left with this term integral control surface rho v dot n t equal to zero, right? And if I say my yes, system is, or the fluid for which I'm considering this continuity equation is incompressible, then what will happen to the equation? There will be no change by the density will be constant, it will be taken outside, and then we can take to the other side, so it will be eliminated from the equation, right? So integral control yes, surface, sir. we, dot and b a equals to zero and now if i say that the area over which i am applying this integral is a constant area then what 
would happen to this equation? That the area of the inlet and the outlet is constant, it's fixed. So we will not need so this V dot N, we will not need this integral, we will need that minus V in, that is the total inlet area velocity into area inlet. plus velocity out, that is total outflow velocity into the total area going out, from which the flow is going out, right? This should be equal to zero. Or in other words, A out, V out should be equal to A in into V in or the volume this is basically what volume flow rate right so the volume coming out from the control volume should be equal to the volume flow rate into the control volume or if I if it's incompressible flow, I can multiply with density on both sides. That will not affect my equation. Is equal to rho q n. That is rho into volume flow rate is mass flow rate. So m dot out should be equal to m dot n that is for steady state. So this is the continuity equation for a system that is experiencing steady state flow steady state. and the fluid is incompressible and the area is fixed. So it is the most simplified form of the continuity equation which you have been studying your whole life. And this is the most generalized form of the continuity equation which is considering all the factors that can happen inside a control volume. Clear? Yes sir. Any question in this? Nope sir. Okay if it is clear then we move on. So we solve some problems to have better understanding of the continuity equation and to apply it to different problem situations, how we can get different information by applying the same continuity equation. So in the first problem, you are seeing a water hydrant that is connected to a nozzle for a fire hose. The problem requires you that you need to calculate the flow rate at point one that is at this location. That is at this location at the inlet. If you require a velocity of 20 meter per second at the location two, that is the outlet of the nozzle at this point. So can we do that? Can we get the mass flow rate if we know the velocity at the outlet? Yes, it's also uh, given to you yeah. that Sir, A1, A1 equals to A2, no. It is also defined to you that the flow is incompressible. incompressible. Now, my suggestion is to you that you will see that the area is constant, right? At both the sections, at section 1 and section 2, right? And also it is given to you that the yeah. flow is incompressible. You can directly jump to, jump to the conclusion that the volume flow rate at point Two should be equal to the volume flow rate at point. Sorry, sir. Ye area two at point two, my area small nahi ho jata, sir. Oh, like yes, but for the outlet it is fixed. Okay, sir. Sir, ye area constant ka matlab ye hai ki wo outlet ki matlab area change nahi ho raha flow ki wajah se ya kisi aur wajah se. Aise hi. Just give sir. me a minute. Sir, 
एक्सक्यूज मी सर यहां पे लेकिन वो नहीं दी हुई कंडीशन ऑफ स्टडी फ्लो जी सॉरी एक कॉल आ गई थी बीच में सो वी वर डिस्कसिंग दैट वी नो दैट द एरिया एट बोथ इनलेट एंड द आउटलेट इज फिक्स्ड एंड द फ्लो इज इनकमर्शियल सो वी कैन डायरेक्टली अप्लाई क्यू टू इक्वल्स टू क्यू वन राइट ठीक है यस सर बट what i would recommend is that we start from the scratch that is we start from the general continuity equation hum thodi der ke liye isko bhool jate hain ki hame ye cheez pata hai and we just start from the general continuity equation and apply all the simplification so, so that we can have the concept ke okay, what's happening why we are eliminating terms so if i ask you to write the general equation of continuity that would be partial by partial t integral control volume rho dv plus integral control surface rho v dot n da equals to zero right yes yeah. now what simplification we can do so first term will become zero due to steady flow first term would be zero Continue. because we are having steady flow right so we'll be left with the second term only that is integral control surface rho v dot n the a equals to zero fine now yes, we know that we have two points of flow that is the section 1 and the section 2 section 1 will act as and let so we can write that because it's a constant area section so for that we'll write that minus for the inlet row 1 that is density at the point 1 that is the area of the point 1 into v1 that is the velocity at point 1 plus at section 2 we have let's say density as row 2 for plus sign because it's an outlet into a2 n2 v2 it should be equal to 0 now we can eliminate the density from this problem why because it is allowed that we can assume this flow to be incompressible so we can write that row 1 equals to row 2 so if row 1 is equal to row 2 cause the flow is incompressible then we will only be left with that a2 B two equals to A one, V one, right? Yes, sir. Yes, Or sir. we can write A one, V one as Q one. So we'll get the volume flow rate at the section 
one with the help of the parameters of the section two a two b two. Can you calculate the volume flow rate? Because we know the area, we know the velocity. It's a circular cross section having diameter forty millimeters, and the velocity is twenty meter per second. So what the flow rate would be? Q one would be. Thirty square by four multiplied by. So you need to run the calculator now. Number crunching. You will need to multiply twenty with pi three point one four into t square. That is forty exponential minus three square divided by four. It comes out to be point zero two five. Meter cube per second. Yes, sir. And now you need to calculate the mass flow rate at point. How will you calculate the mass flow rate? So density multiplied. You will simple multiply the m dot one would be equal to density into q one and density of the water is. Thousand, so we we'll simply multiply it with thousand. So that would be thousand multiplied by the answer. It's twenty-five point one two units would be kg per second. So it, is it clear? Any question in this problem? उसमें सर सर आप सर एक क्वेश्चन था सर एक क्वेश्चन था कि अगर इस इस केस में तो हमारे पास वो कंट्रोल वॉल्यूम वाली टर्म तो जीरो हो जाती है लेट्स से हमारे पास एक फनल है या कोई स्टोरेज टैंक है उसमें हम वाटर डिप करते हैं तो फिर उसमें तो ये जो कंट्रोल वॉल्यूम वाली टर्म है जिसे अनस्टडी टर्म कह रहे हैं आप वो तो जीरो नहीं होगी द कंट्रोल वॉल्यूम would only be zero when we will considering unsteady flows if we are considering the steady flow that is there is no change in the properties of the flow that is that is not storing some mass or not it is releasing some mass let's uh, try to discuss this concept what's the first time it is presenting let's say this is a control volume flow is entering from this side and is leaving from this side If it's a steady state flow, flow then this according to Gunther equation, this inlet should be equal to the M1 should be equal to M2, right? Yes, sir. But if I say there uh, are two chemicals inside the control volume, that is, I have placed let's say um, sodium inside here, and from here I am pumping water. What will happen? There will be a chemical reaction inside the control volume. Yes, sir. So water will be converted into something else. Let's say it's converted into. Uh, I don't know what's the reaction between uh, water and sodium hydro uh, sodium. Let's say it's NaOH. We get sodium hydroxide. so on the outlet will not get any water will get some by product right yes sir the mass of that by product will be less than that that is coming in right yes sir yes sir yes sir ठीक okay. it means that control volume is storing some mass there are yes, some sir. unsteady effects involved here with time this mass is changing clear yes sir clear okay thank you sir any question else koi aur cheez samajh na aayi ho okay if it's clear then we move to the next problem this is a very similar problem uh, we will be applying this to relate the velocity the the question or that how if the area is variable how you will deal with that problem how the continuity equation will be modified so we just do this problem and this problem you have incompressible laminar steady flow that develops in a straight pipe 
initially at section one the velocity of the flow is constant that is it is uniform velocity and the velocity is equal to capital u at section one u1 is equal to u but as the flow progress we see that the velocity is a variable it's changing with the radius of the pipe at the center it is minimum and at the sorry at the center it is maximum and at the uh, pipe surface it is minimum zero equal equal to zero so it means that the velocity is changing with the area and why it is zero at the surface pipe section why and why it is maximum at the center due to the no slip condition right the layers at the boundaries of the pipe will face no slip condition they will attach themselves to the pipe surface so at their velocity will be zero and it will be maximum the layers beneath that will be facing less uh, friction and that's why the velocity will be maximum at the center now you are asked to relate the velocity at the pipe inlet that is u with the maximum velocity at the section two how can you relate that Can we, apply this we write the continuity equation that is plus partial by partial t integral control volume rho dv plus integral control surface. should be zero. And from the problem statement, we know that the flow is laminar steady flow. So it means that the first term would be zero. zero. So we'll be only left with the second term that is control surface integral rho v dot m. A equals to zero. Now, if we see that we have two surfaces, we have two control surfaces. If this is the control volume. This blue line, this blue dashed line, representing your control volume. And if we see the control volume, we see that we have two surfaces. One is the inlet, that is section one is acting as inlet, and the section two is acting as outlet. At section one, the velocity is fixed, and the area is also fixed right yes, sir. so we can write the integral or the this integral at the inlet as minus rho a1 into u1 which is basically capital u right But at section two, we see that the velocity is maximum at the center, but it is many pipe relationship of the velocity with the area. So we cannot write this simple integral. We need to write it as integral at control surface outlet as rho u2 is given to us, which is given to us as a function. We can eliminate this n because we have already decided that it's an outlet. So we don't need to write the n now, the dot product, into da2 should be equal to 0. Is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Now answer my just a little question. If this is a circle, let's assume it's a circle. Um, let me draw a circle. If this is a circle, and I say this is its center, what's the area of the center? 
सर आपकी स्क्रीन थोड़ी लैग हो क्या रही है स्क्रीन स्टक है जी सर अब मैं फ्यूज कर रहा हूं सर सेंटर का एरिया सर आ गया एरिया ऑफ द सेंटर सर वो पॉइंट होगा उसका एरिया तो जीरो इलिजिबल दिस पॉइंट जीरो जीरोबल टू यू नो सर Yes, sir. And I say the area of this red circle is small r. Sorry, the radius of this red circle is small r. What's its area? Small circle. Small r square. Small, small r square. Okay. If I say the distance between these two circles is variable, that is, the small r can also change. Capital R will remain fixed. Small r can vary from small, uh, zero to capital R, right? and that change is represented by dr so now what's the area of the region between the two circles the area of the donut pi r 2 square minus r 1 square but if i say that small r is varying so fir uske liye aa jayega pi r dr pi r dr for that you will need The circumference of the boundary, right? The outer circle. That is two pi r, right? Yes. And multiply that boundary with the change in radius. That is dr, right? Yes. Okay. So this will be the region of the donut between the two circles, and this, if I say this area is equal to d a two, so area variable हो गया ना? Oh, yes. so the velocity function given to us is a function of r right here we can see that u2 is a function of r and we have also made our area function of r so we can now write that minus because density is a constant in both cases it's incompressible flow we can take it to the other side so we don't need to write it we'll just write a1 u sorry plus integral from 0 to capital r u2 yahan pe aap uska function likh lenge theek hai u2 ka into 2 da2 is now 2 pi r into dr here yes sir this just short mistake here we should be writing it as 2 pi r and this can maximum go to capital r okay. can you solve this integral you will just need to put this u2 function here this function here and you can then solve this when you solve this integral you will get the relationship okay sir u2 ko function kar that is u max into 1 minus r by r square okay it's given in the problem okay when you will solve this you will get this relationship that u max is two times of the inlet velocity u that is it is two times the inlet velocity 
Is it clear? Any problem or any question in regards sir, to this? Sir, first one is the area pi and square, right? No? Yes. Okay. Is it clear? ये जो आपने सारी इक्वेशन लाइफ कर रहे हैं तो एक्सप्लेन कर दे इस बार आप सबको नजर नहीं आ रहा होगा व्हिच इक्वेशन दिस इक्वेशन माइनस फॉर ए वन यू इनटू प्लस दिस इंटेग्रल व्हिच आई एम हाइलाइटिंग इन ब्लू यहाँ से आगे आप बात कर रहे हैं राइट नो सर सर ऊपर से कर रहा हूँ जहाँ पे वो आपने कहा था कि सर्किट पे फ्लो and we are asked to relate the velocity at the inlet that is this u with the maximum velocity that is at the center of this outlet and we know that the velocity at the center is maximum because there is no slip condition at the surface the flow is attached to the pipe so there is no slip condition the velocity becomes zero and it is maximum at the center because the center line here faces the minimum resistance because the flow is steady that's why we have uh, eliminated the first term and we are only left with the second term of the continuity equation that is the integral of the control surface rho v dot n dA should be equal to 0 when we see the control surfaces we see that we have two control surfaces one is this section 1 here this is the control surface we see that it's a constant control surface and velocity is constant also so we can simply write it as rho a1 u and we see that it's an inlet to the control volume so there will be a negative sign with it we see that the second control surface is a function of the radius and the velocity is also a function of the radius so we need to solve it in the integral form so we inspect the area we see that how the area is varying with radius r we develop that function here and then we write the velocity function and we solve this after solving we get to know that the maximum velocity is related two times to the inlet velocity clear yes yeah, sir okay Here, then we solve another problem. We will solving a lot of problems today, so we can have a better concept of the continuity. Between some of the problems, I will just be describing to you, and you will be solving them yourselves. Others we will be solving in detail. Okay, here in this problem, uh, we have a Y mixer. Y mixer is basically like, just like in your home, warm water and cold water, so then it mixes with an average water that you have in your shower. So the Y mixer is like this. But in this Y mixer, we are mixing water and alcohol. We have water in the one side at a volume flow rate of 0.1 meter cube per second, and we have alcohol having specific gravity 0.8 at a flow rate of 0.3 meter cube per second. After mixing, you will get a mixture of water and alcohol. The question is asking you to calculate the average density of the mixture. That is the mixture of alcohol and water. Can you solve this? Yes, sir. We define a control volume like this. And we say this is the one. This is the two region. and outlet is the third control surface so there are two inlets and one outlet in this problem we know that according to the continuity equation if this flow is incompressible q1 plus q2 should be equal to Q3, Q3, and we know Q1 and Q2, right? Yes. So sir. Q3 should be equal to 0.4 meter cube per second. Yes, sir. And if this flow is incompressible, also the mass flow rate should be. Yes, sir. 
equal so m dot one plus m dot two should be equal to m dot three right or row one q one plus row two q two should be equal to row three q three clear yes sir yes sir so in this equation we know all the terms except the row 3 sirf hame row 3 unknown hai and we know all other terms that is we know row 1 we know q1 we know row 2 we know q2 and we know q3 so we, we when we'll solve this we'll get the density of the mixture that is row 3 clear yes sir yes sir any problem in this sir yahan pe hame kaha to nahi tha ki ye hamare paas steady flow condition hai Sometimes you will have to assume, right? If it is not okay. given, the problem is asking you to calculate the average density. So for average density, you ha will have to assume two things. That is, one, this flow is steady flow. If this is not a steady flow, then you cannot cannot calculate the average property because the property will be changing with time. The density will change every instant the water and mix uh, alcohol mixes, right? so if the, it's the average density then you can have that it's a steady flow this average density term is telling you that you can assume it as a steady flow and if you don't assume it incompressible then you cannot write this second equation then you need to know the density functions because the problem has stated the water density as 999 kg per meter cube and it has given you the specific gravity of the alcohol so you can calculate the Yes, alcohol will be equal to the specific gravity into rho of water. So, if the density of the water is fixed, and if density of the alcohol is fixed, it means that you can assume it as incompressible flow. Clear? Yes, sir. <laughs> and you need to write the need assumptions whatever you assume you need okay i will just give you hint to solve these problems and they will solve yourself uh in the next next problem you are given a water jet pump Uh, a water jet pump is like just a syringe. Syringe का तो पता है ना सबको उसमें कोई तो नहीं ये syringe क्या होती है ठीक है injection. So it's just like an injection. So what's happen in a water jet pump when you push the plunger in the center line fluid it gets accelerated it moves a faster velocity as compared to the fluid on the sides. So in this problem. you are required to calculate the entrained fluid flow rate that is the flow rate of this fluid that is here in this region here and here when you are given the velocity of the center fluid that is 30 meter per second and when you are given the velocity at of the fluid at the outlet that is 6 meter per second can you do that सर yes. इसमें हम थ्री सर्फेस You are yes. given the area of the third surface. Its area given is velocity given. Is. You are given the area of the second surface and the velocity. You can calculate the area of the first surface would be equal to the area of the third surface mm -hmm. minus area of the second sir, surface, right? Sir. Yes, sir. So we know that the volume flow rate should be equal to that is Q1 
plus Q2 should be equal to Q3. Q3. You can calculate Q3, you can calculate Q2, you will get Q1, which is the required. Okay, you will just need to have some unit conversion because the answer required is in liter per second and you will get the answer in meter cube per second. Is it clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Now, the next problem is a very interesting one. It's the last problem we are going to solve today. In the next problem, uh, you have a air compressor. Dekha hoa sabne air compressor? Are you all, all familiar with the air compressors? Yes, sir. Gaadi ke tire mein hawa par wane jate yes, hain, to aap yes, nazar aata ho. In this air compressor, we have an... Just quickly discuss this and solve this. What's happening? The air compressor is taking in air at 10 feet cube per second. And the density of the inlet air is 0.0023. 8 slugs per feet cube. The volume of this tank is 20 feet cube per second. And the outlet is 1.2 inches in diameter. And the velocity of the uh, air coming out from it is 700 feet per second. And the density is 0 0.0035 slugs per feet cube. The density is increased. And the problem is asking, determine the rate in slugs per second at which the mass of air in the tank is increasing or decreasing. Because we can see that there is an inlet, there is an outlet, but the density is changing. It means that the mass of the the tank will be filled. The tank has to fill a volume of what? 20 feet per cube, 20 feet cube. So is the mass increasing in the tank or decreasing? If this, these are the conditions. So how will you calculate this? Uh, sir, I'm continuing to uh, equation apply for is it? Or, uh, we will write yes, this form. Uh, we will write, yes, we will apply the continuity equation. We will say that if this is a steady state system and if this is a continuous system, if the continuity equation is applicable, then the time rate of change of mass should be equal to zero. Zero, which means that DM system. by dt which we can calculate that we can say that okay there is some mass coming in right the difference of the mass coming in and mass coming out should be zero if it's a constant system so if we can calculate this difference, we can tell that either the mass is increasing, either the mass is decreasing, or the mass is constant. If it is zero, we'll see that there is no increase in mass, no decrease in mass. It's a constant system. It's a proper system. But if there is an, if this result is positive, it means that the mass is increasing. Yes, and if this result is negative, it means that the mass is decreasing. Decreasing. Okay. Can can you calculate m dot n? You are given. Sir, rho a one v one. Yes, you are given rho one. You are given q one. Right. This section and yes, inlet sir. section. Yes, this sir. is the section yes. one. This is the section one. Can you calculate m dot out? This is the section two here. Can you calculate? Rho two a two. Yes, yes sir. Rho a one or a two or v two. A rho two. A2 and V2. Just keep in mind that the area should be in feet square. The diameter here is in inches. Convert it into feet. Convert this diameter into feet and then calculate the area. Okay? Yes, sir. So when you will calculate, you will get the time rate of change of mass. Okay? You can do this on your own. Now the second part, determine the average time rate of change of air density within the tank. At the inlet, the density is less and at the outlet, the density is 
increased, right? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. So in the second part, the problem is asking you what is the time rate of change of density? Density is rate se change or is rate se vary kar hai. So can you calculate that? Sir, uske liye time uh, hoga na. Matlab ke mass uh, mass uh, flow jo hai, usme jitna change hoga, usse hum uh, time find kar lenge. Yes. Sir, hamare paas jo uski we basis pe. Yes, we have calculated this term, right? D M system by D T. Right? We know this term now. Yes, sir. Oh, that's fair, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And sir. if I write it like this. That mass of the system is basically a combination of two parameters. Which parameters? Uh, sir, uh, row into uh, volume. Density into volume, right? Yes, sir. And we see that the volume of the tank is fixed. It cannot change. It is fixed at? 20, 20, feet, 20 cube. feet cube. Yes, if it is fixed, it means that it is constant, right? So from this derivative, we can take the volume outside. And we will get D by. DD. Rho. So. Did we get the time rate change of density? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Volume was divided. So D rho by DT is basically. equal to dm system divided by dt and this whole divided by the volume of the tank mm -hmm. clear yes sir any question in this problem Any question, any query? Oh, oh, sir. These are your homework problems. You need to solve these. These are very interesting problems. You will get. You can see that all the problems we have solved today are giving you a new, new dimension. You are getting a new result from each problem. You can get so all these problems are different problems, so you should solve them. I believe you will be able to solve them. Maybe you get to know a new point or you, you may have some question in regards to that you something that you don't understand. Maybe you get some uh, problem that is involving the unsteady terms. So how to equate that or maybe you get a problem that is involving much more complex integrals. How to solve that? So you should solve those and we can discuss them in the next class. OK. OK, sir. OK, sir. Now there is just uh, because in the next uh, topic we will be having a moving control volume. So I just want to give you an idea of the moving control volume and then we'll, we are going to end this. What's the moving control volume? Because practically speaking, most of the times as a mechanical engineer, you will be encountering the bodies in motion, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Statics will not be a major part. So if I say this is some vehicle and this is moving with velocity V and I ask you to calculate the. If this is the fuel tank of this vehicle. And I ask you to apply the continuity equation or the momentum equation on the fuel tank. That's what's coming in the into the fuel tank and what's going out from the fuel tank. How the rate of the fuel is changing. Let's say this is the uh, vehicles out and this. So you will see that when the vehicle is moving with velocity V, the control volume will also move with velocity V, right? Let's say the yes, velocity of the control volume is VCV and the velocity of the vehicle is V. But now the control volume is moving. So how to tackle that problem? From a, th there, for this we need to 
have the observer perspective from an observer that is sitting in the vehicle. Let's say there is an observer here, observer A. From his perspective, the control volume is fixed, Stationary. right? Stationary. Stationary. From an other observer, which is standing, let's say observer B, which is standing on road, from his perspective, the vehicle is moving and the control volume is also moving, right? Yes, sir. So this, these are two velocities that are from the perspective of an observer that is fixed, right? These are the absolute velocities. If B observer is fixed. Right. Yes, sir. But let's say we have another observer C. Which is sitting on another vehicle and is also moving. Then what will be the concept utilized here? The relative velocity. Relative. Yes, relative. you will see that if the observer C is moving with velocity, let's say V2, then the velocity would be, the relative velocity would be equal to V control volume or V minus V2, V2. right? So the control volume would be moving with the velocity W. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we need to measure the velocities from the perspective of a fixed observer. And then we see that how this control volume is moving with respect to a moving observer. And then we calculate the relative velocity. Clear? Because most of the time in fluid mechanics, what would be happening? Let's say if this is a jet engine. From an observer perspective who is sitting on the aeroplane, it's stationary, right? Yes, sir. From an observer on ground, this jet engine would be moving with the velocity of the plane. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But in actuality, the fluid coming into it would be. Right side. In the opposing direction, having its own velocity. Yes, sir. So the control volume will be moving with the velocity that would be difference of the or the sum of these two, right? Velocity of the plane minus B, right? right the, fluid will be, the fluid will be entering the control volume with this relative velocity, right? Yes, sir. So is the concept of the moving control volume clear? Yes, sir. But remember this control volume is also fixed. It's it's moving, but it's non-deformable. It's not a deforming control volume. It's non-deformable. It's still non-deformable. But what will we do now in all the equation instead of using the absolute velocity V, now we'll be using this relative velocity W in the continuity equation or any subsequent equation for which we are experiencing the control volume that is moving. OK, if the control volume is fixed. We'll be using the normal V this V. But if the control volume is moving, then we'll be using the relative velocity. Depending upon the situation, we'll calculate that relative velocity. Any question? Excuse me, sir. This relative velocity is fluid ki hai with respect, with the respect control, to wind. The velocity of the control volume with respect to the fluid. Fluid. Okay. Practically, we will be clear when we solve the problem solve moving control volume. Because now I am giving you a sense of why the relative velocity is calculated. Practically, our understanding will be better when we solve the problem. Solve because we are having three velocities in this case. The control volume velocity from a stationary point of reference, which I have already explained. The absolute fluid velocity observed from a stationary point of reference. right? and the relative velocity that is the difference between the two velocities they can be adding or they can be subtracting so that relative velocity will be calculated based on case to case clear 
So we'll just be writing okay. the if it's the continuity equation and we are having non deforming moving control volume, then we'll be using W instead of the V instead of the absolute velocity. We'll be using the relative velocity. Similarly for the other equation that we will subsequently develop. This is a problem related to a moving control volume. We'll solve this in the next class. So any question from today's lecture? No, sir. No. Okay, if it is clear, then we end. Uh, your quiz will be on Thursday. I will communicate the time tomorrow. कल हमारी क्लास है हम उसमें आपको टाइम 